Welcome back to the News at 10. The Special Advisor to the President on Diaspora and the Chief Executive Officer of Nigeria's in Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabirerua, has confirmed the arrest of a man who destroyed vehicles at the Nigerian High Commission in London. Mrs. Dabri Erewa, in a statement, described the attitude of the suspect, Jeffrey Emohime, as unpatriotic. The statement explains that Mr. Emohime allegedly went to the Nigeria High Commission in London today to collect his passport, which had expired since November 2017. He, however, got there an hour after the collection of the passports had closed and was told to bring his collection slip, which he could not produce. He thereafter left agitated and returned from a nearby hotel to destroy about seven cars, five belonging to the mission, and two to visitors who parked nearby. His attempt to destroy the High Commissioner's car failed. Let's take a look at some sports now. Here's Ayotunde Balogo. Many thanks. Over just four days to the start of the 18th edition of the Africa Cup of Nations in Egypt, Star Lagerbeer is set to thrill fans with unforgettable moments. At a media parley event in Lagos, Star Lagerbeer reeled out plans to engage consumers and create memorable experiences for football fans across the country during the AFCON tournament. Eagles will shine like a million stars in Egypt. No Officials of Nigerian breweries, current of former Super Eagles players and fans, are using this event to consolidate support for Team Nigeria at the AFCON. The campaign tagged Shine On Ninja will expose the passion and loyalty of football fans. Star has been there for the Super Eagles for our national team. We've been a super fan of our national team. So this uh, particular Afghan edition is no exception. We're showing our support for our team. What sort of experience is Star Lagabier giving the fans? What we're doing is that we're giving Nigerians the opportunity to watch the games in a fun-filled, security-tight environment. We're bringing Cairo to Egypt, to, to Nigeria. The NFF and ex-players also used the opportunity to advocate more support for the Super Eagles. We're very happy with Star because Star has been one of the pillars of uh, Super Eagles in recent times and of the NFF. So we're not surprised, but we don't take it for granted. I hope we are going to have enough of uh, enough fans that we go and support our boys. I saw the female World Cup yesterday in Netherlands against Cameroon. Everywhere was orange, massive. They do inspire the players, uh, and uh, I hope the Nigerian Football Federation can work with the fans so that we can have enough numbers of fans to go up there and support our boys because we all know the North, North African fans are very fanatic. It's I mean, very important. And um, it's going to motivate the, the players. I, mean, I think I mean the support that they are having, and uh, the campaign and everything, events and all that. I mean, it's I mean a kind of I mean motivation. And I mean, I think he's going to motivate the players the more. If you have a Star Lagabia is an official sponsor of the Nigeria Football Federation and has used this event to renew its commitment to support the Super Eagles for a fourth Afghan title in Egypt. The host France finished top of Group A at the FIFA Women's World Cup with a 1-0 win over Nigeria in an incident-packed finish in Rennes. The France were awarded a penalty which was saved initially by Super Falcons goalkeeper Chamaka Nadouzier, but Nadouzier was judged to have moved off her line early and Wendy Reynard slotted the retaken spot kick. The Super Falcons still have a big chance of making the knockout stage as one of the best third-place teams. Norway also beat Korea Republic 2-1 to qualify for the round of 16. South Africa's Banyan and Bayana have crashed out of the FIFA Women's World Cup after losing 4-0 to European giant Germany. Despite losing their first two games, the South Africans still had a mathematical chance of qualifying, but it was not to be as the Germans beat them to top Group B with nine points. Spain and China settled for a goalless draw, with both teams ending the group stage with four points each. Germany and Spain qualify automatically, while China will wait to be confirmed as one of the four best third-place teams. A courageous Marin Cilic staved off a late comeback attempt by Christian Garin to prevail 6-1-7-6 in the opening round of the Queen's Club Championships. Cilic was in cruise control for most of the match against the 23-year-old and defeated the Chilean in 1 hour and 17 minutes to reach the second round. Okay, Cilic.
that's a wrap on sports news. Back to you, Ijoma. Hello, Ayo Tunde. And on entertainment news tonight, Nigerian American actor Roti B reveals big plans on talent development within the Nigerian creative industry. Here's Mayowa for Gundele with more. Many thanks. Yeah, top stories on entertainment. Nigerian American actor, singer, and model Rotimi, one of the biggest faces from the New York smashing drama series Par, has revealed that he has plans to come back to Nigeria and help develop the creative circle. The actor, who is signed to 50 Cent's G Unit in an interview with our London correspondent, said he'll soon be home to pull his weight and contribute to developing new talents in the industry. I want to open up a school for the arts mentioned in everything paid for, you know, and, and you just learn how to be creative in whatever way. It doesn't have to be music, it could be art, it could be painting, it could be anything. This is the school for the creatives. Currently on his African giant tour, Yes Star Burner Boy drops his latest music video for the song titled Anybody, a song which addresses respect, growth, reputation, and more importantly, recognizing who you are and taking charge. The track, which chronicles his journey to his current status in the industry, has its visuals imagined and created by Clarence Peters. And that's it for me tonight. Thanks for watching. Let's head back for the rest of the News at 10. Thanks a lot, Mayowa. And the main news again. The Supreme Court today fixed July the 5th to deliver judgment on the Oshun governorship election dispute between PDP's Ademola Adeleke and the incumbent governor, Boiga Oyetola. And that's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks a lot for staying with us. I'm Ijoma Renato. You have a good night.